Namaste, Hari Om to all. We will start the program today with the opening prayers as usual. Who has joined first today? Vishuddha, I think, no? Vishuta. So Vishuddha can repeat the prayers, correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Vishuddha. Ready? Yes, ma'am. Om Vakratunta Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Guru Me Deva Sarva Kadyeshu Sarvada Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Guru Me Deva Sarva Kadyeshu Sarvada Saraswati Namastubhyam Varade Kamarupini Vidyarambam Karishyami Siddhir Bhavatumi Sadam Saraswati Namastubhyam Varade Kamarupini Vidyarambam Karishyami Siddhir Bhavatumi Sadam Guru Brahma Guru Vishnuhu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Satchat Parabrahma Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Satchat Parabrahma Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Thank you Vishuddha so as planned, we will start with the Vishnu Sastranamam as per the allotment, okay? Hope everybody is prepared well. Hmm? So first we will start with Kushi. One, two, three slokas. Kushi. Should I share, are you should I share yeah. the screen? Yes, yes, definitely, yeah. Kushi, are you ready? Unmute yourself, Kushi. Yes, I'm a note. Yeah. Start. Oh. oh. Shuklam Bharatharam Vishnam, Shashi Varnam Chaturbhajam, Prasanna Vatanam Dhyayet, Sarva Vignu Pashantaye, Vyasam Vashishta Naptaram, Shakte Pautram Kalmasham, Parara Shartamacham Mande, Shukatatam Taponidim, Vyasaya Vishna Rupaya, Vyasa Rupaya Vishnave, Namo Vai Brahma Nidaye, Vashishtaya Namo Namaha. Danya Vadaha. Uh, you are on mute, Amma. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice pronunciation, Kushi. Very good. Well chanted. Okay. Now next, Vedant. Is he present? Vedant. Yes, I'm right. Okay, so for you it is four, five, and six. Okay, ready. Avikara Yashutaya Avikara Yashutaya Nityaya Paramat Mane Sudhi Kalu Pazupaya Vishna Vesa Vishna Vesa Yes, yes, Madana Bajena Janma samsara bhandana timuchyate namastasme Krishna veta dha Vishna ve Onamo Vishna veta Vishna ve Sri Vaishampaya uvacha Shritva dharma nasheshena Paranani cha sarvasha Yudhishthira shantanava Punadeva pyabhashataha Very good. Thank you, Vedant. Good. Next is Aditri. Aditri, are you there? Aditri Please. is not there. I think we can ask B Vaishnavi also same sloka. She can do. Okay. B Vaishnavi okay. also seven to nine only. Okay. 
Um, Unmute yourself, be Vaishnavi. Okay, ma'am. Udharma Sarva Dharmanam Bhavata Paramo Mataha Kimja Panmuchate Jentuhu Jenna Samsara Bandhana Bhishma Uvacha Jagat Prabhum Deva Devam Anantam Purushottamam Stuvan Nama Sahasrena Purusha Satatotitaha Amma, shall I read the next one also? Ah, one more, no? Only two you have finished, no? Tame vacharja yen nityam bhaktya purusham avyayam dhyayan stuvan namasyanshta yajamanas tame vacham. Thank you. Nice pronunciation, nicely chanted. Uh -huh. Next is Vaishnavi sisters. Vaishnavi is the yes. first one, no? Vaishnavi, are you ready? Yes, sir. Anna Adini the Nam Vishnum, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, Loka Dyaksham Stuvanityam, Sarva Dukati Gobavet, Brahmanyam Sarva Dharmangam, Loka Loka Nam Kirti Vandana Vardanam, Loka Nata Mahabut. Mahadbhutam sarva bhuta bhavod bhavam esha me sarva dharmanam dharmo dikatamo mataha yad bhakt yad pundari kaksham stavai rarche narasadaha. Very good. Thank you, Vaishnavi. Nicely chanted. Next is Hasini. Asini, are you able to unmute yourself? Uh, yes, I'm. Start. Uh, Brahmanyam sarva dharmagnyam loka nam kiti vardhanam loka natam mahadbhutam sarva bhuta bhavod bhavam eshami es, 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 sarva dharmanam Dharmo dikatamo mataha Yatpatya Pundari kaksha Stavai rarchena rasada Paramam yo mahatejo Paramam yo mahatapaha Paramam yo mahat brahma Paramam ya parayanam. Okay, thank you, Hasini. I think the numbers. Uh, the numbers are slightly changed, I think. Anyway, uh -huh. that's okay. Uh, uh -huh. Next is Virat. Yes, I'm there. Virat, what you have prepared, that itself you can chant, okay? Yes. Hmm. Pavitranam pavitram yo mangalam chaya mangalam daivatam devatam cha bhutanam yo mahapitaha yata sarvani bhutani Pavantya Yuga Mave Yasmin Chapra Yamyanti Unareva Yugakshe Tasya Loka Pradanasya Jaganatya Sabhupate Vishnu Nama Sahasram Ne Shunubhatam Bayapaham Thank you Virat. Good chanting. Nicely chanted. Next Sai. 19 to 21, right? Yes, yes. You start after Virat's uh, finish. Where, where Virat finish? Next sloka you start. Okay. Yani Namani Gaunani Vikyatani Mahatmanaha Rishi Bhifari Gitani Vakshya Maya Bhutaye Rishar Nam Nam Sahasrasya Veda Vyaso Mahamuni Chando Anushtupta Thadevo Bhagavan Deva Ki Sutaha Amritam Shudbhavo Bijam Shaktir Deva Ki Nantanaha Trisa Mahrita Yam Tasya Shantiyar Devi Niyudhyate Very good. Thank you Nishant. So we have start, stopped here only. So again we will start from 1 to 3. That is Nitika. Is she there? Nitika. Yes, ma'am. Ah, one, two, three, start. One minute. 
I have a book. Shuklambaladaram, Vishnum, Shashi Varnam, Chatur Pujam, Rasan Navadaram, Yai, Sarva Vigno Pashate, Vyasam Vasishta Naktaram, Shakti, Pautramakalmasham, Parasharash Jamandi, Shukatatam, Taponidim. One more. Vyasa Vishnu Rupaya, Vyasa Rupaya, Vishnave, Namo Vai Brahman, Idai Vasishta, Namo Namaha. Very good. Thank you, Nitika. You can little slow down, okay? Don't be in a hurry while chanting. If you chant slowly, it will be very nice, okay? Next step, huh? Next, Usha Ashwini. Usha Ashwini is not there, ma'am. Not um, there, not there, yeah. okay. And uh, uh, Vaishnavi also has already chanted. Chanted. So next yeah. is? Vishruta, no, no, no. 10 to Vishruta. 12. Yeah, 10 to 12, okay. If we should I can chant four to six also, it is good. Namo Vai Brahma Nidaye Vashishtaya Namo Nama Avikara Yashuddaya Nitya Paramavatnane Sadai Karupa Rupaya Vishnave Sarva Jishnave Yasyas Marana Matrena Jamma Sansara Bandhanat Mimuchite Namastasme Vishnave Prada Vishnave Om Namo Vishnave Prabha Vishnave Vaishampaya Novacha Shutva Dharma Nisheshena Pava Nani Chicharvasha Vidishtira Chantanavam Puna Reva Pyapashata Vidishtiruvacha Kime Kambeva Tamroke Kimba Pekam Parayanam Suvantakam Kamarchantam Prabni Utmanava Subham O Dharma Sarva Dharmanam Bhavata Paramo Mata Kinja Pumjaka Titan Sanjana Samsara Bandanat Bishma Uacha Jagat Prabhum Deva Devam Anantam Purushotamam Suvan Nama Sahasrena Purushasatato Titaha. Okay, very good, very good, Vishuta. That means even if you didn't practice, you could chant well. Huh? That means you are chanting every day. Vishuta, are you chanting every day? Um, usually, uh, my, every Saturday, my family chants together in the evening after we light the lamp. So. Okay, so together all of you chant. Eh? Very good, very good. Thank you, Vishuta. Next, Hanshit. Hanshit, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ah, one, two, three. No, should I start? <laughs> yeah, chat. Om Suklam Badram Vishnum Shishivarnam Chaturbujam Prasanna Vadanam Jaye Sarva Vignom Pashantahe. Next. Yes, Yam Virada Vyasam Vyasam Vasishtan Aptaram Vyasam Vasishtan Aptaram Shakte Purutoram Kalmasham Prasharatmaja Vande Shuktam Tapo Nidam. Wow. Once more, you repeat Vyasam Vasishta Naptaram Shakti Pautramakal Masham. Vyasam Vasishta Naptaram Shakti Pautramakal Masham. Parasharat Majam Vande Shukatatam Tapu Nidim. Parasharat Majam Vande Shuktam Tapu Nidim. Shukatatam Tapu Nidim. Shuknadatam Tapu Nidim. Vyasa Yavishnu Rupaya Vyasa Rupaya Vishnu Rupaya Vyasa Rupaya Vishnave Vyasa Yavishnu Rupaya Vyasa Rupaya Vishnave Namo Vai Brahma Nidaye Vasishtaya Namo Namaha Namo Vai Braya Idye Vasishta Namo Namaha Namo Vai Brahma Nidaye Namo Vaidam Nidhaye Vasishtaya Namo Namaha Vasishtaya Namo Namaha Okay, Hanshit, you have to practice. Huh? Only simple, five. one, two, three only, I gave it to you. I think you need more practice. Okay, you have a book or have you written in a notebook? How did you practice? 
Anshit, mm. how did you practice? Mm. No reply? Anshit? Okay, we'll go to next. Samvedya? Yes, sir, ma. Ah, four, five, six. Come on, start. Okay, ma. Avikaraya Shuddhaya, Nityaya Paramatmane, Sadaika Rupa Rupaya, Vishnave Sarva Jishnave, Yasya Smarana Matrena, Jarna Samsara Bandanat, Vimuchate Namastasmai, Vishnave Prabha Vishnave, Om Namo Vishnave Prabha Vishnave, Sri Om Sri Vaishampaya Nuvacha, Shutva Dharmana Sheshena, Pava Nanicha Sarvashaha, Yudhishthira Shantanavam, Punareva Vyabhashataha. Very good. Good chanting. Nicely you have practiced. Samvidya, why, why did you close your camera? If you have uh, kept it open, no? So that we would have enjoyed more your chanting. Huh? Yes, some, uh, but uh, my uh. hair is a mess, so that's why. Okay, okay. Next, Chinmayi, seven, and, seven mm. eight, and nine. Chinmayi? Yes, some. Shri Udhishthira Vacha, Kimi Ekam Daivatam Loki, Kimbapi Ekam Parayanam, Stuvantu Kam Kamkamarchanta, Rap Nuya Mana Vashubam, Kodarma Sarva Dharmana, Bhavata Paramumataha, Kimja Panmuchati Jantaha, Janmasam Sarabandanat, Sri Bhishma Vacha, Jagat Prabhum Deva Deva Manantana, Purushotamam, Stuvan Nama Sastrane, Purusha Satatu Titaha, Stuvan Nama Sahasrena Stuvan Nama Sahasrena Purusha Satatu Titaha Purusha Satatu Titaha Good, very good. Thank you. Now last, Deshika 10, 11, and 12. Vame Vachate Nityam Bhaktya Purusha Mafayam Dhyayan Stuvan Nama Namasyamcha Yagmya ಯಜಮಾನಸ್ತಮೇವಚಮಾನಸ್ತಮೇವಚಿಂದಮೇವಚಿಂದಮೇವಚಿಂದಮೇವಚಿಂದಮೇವಚಿಂದಮೇವ
Yes. For me, every no, single we are going to discuss to why why do we do that? Can you tell? Why should we ring the bell like I'm that? Not sure. we ring the bell one by one. One by one. Please by tell your name. That... I'm not sure. Raise your hand. Raise your hand, please. Raise your hand. We'll ask you. Who all want to answer for this question? Why do you all give your answers? Then I will give my answer. Okay, me, Vishnu. When we ring bell at the temple, it produces an auspicious sound called Om, which is an universal sound. Okay, very good. Then Hasini, what is your answer? Amma, it is said that uh, by ringing the bell, which welcomes divinity and sends out evil, the sound of the bell is said to be disengage mind from. Outgoing thoughts thus make the brain more receptive. Very good, Nitika. Ma'am, it's uh, my mother told me that when you ring the bell, it's auspicious and it brings good omen and it's uh, positive energy. It's producing oh, positive energy. Yeah, positive energy. Vishruta, you have any other point other than this? Vishruta. Um, when we ring the bell, we do it. With, uh, we might uh, think of many bad things before coming to the temple. When we ring the bell, the bell absorbs all our bad energy and starts emitting good energy. Okay. Anything else? Anyone has to say? So you all have covered whatever I wanted to say. Almost. Anyway, I'll repeat once again so that uh, you all understand. Anshit, you want to say something? Any other new point? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, sometimes they tell that I, uh, if we pray to the God anything when the bell rings, that means it it will be true. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that belief is also there. We think of something and the bell rings in the temple and we get the satisfaction it's going to happen. All very good points you have given. So mostly I'm going to repeat only. So number one. See, it's not go for uh, getting permission to go to the temple. We need not ask permission or to announce that we have entered the temple. God knows that you have entered the temple. So it is mainly to drive away other thoughts in our mind. See, when we start to go to the temple, so many thoughts are in your mind. You may be thinking how to prepare for the test tomorrow. And you may be thinking the fight you had with your friend. So many other thoughts. With these thoughts itself, you enter into the temple. You may not be able to concentrate there, connect with the divinity. So the moment the bell rings, you no, know, it drives away all your other thoughts and helps you to drive your attention, your energy, everything on the Bhagavan. That is one thing. Mainly, you all said the evil thoughts will go away. Negative forces will be removed. See, everyone has jealousy, pride, anger. All these bad qualities are there in our mind. With these bad qualities, how can we worship the God in the temple? So the moment you hear that vibrating sound of the bell, these evil thoughts, everything is removed. That is another thing. Then one more point which you no one said, it, is, it energizes our chakras. Chakras means there are energy points in our body. So the sound of the bell gives energy, some invisible power to our body, our mind and many organs in a positive way. They are all energized. Even if you feel tired going to the temple, when you hear the sound of the bell, you will feel energized. Ma'am, isn't that creating uh, positive energy? Yes, same thing. I'm actually mostly repeating what you all said only. And which sound uh, is heard? When the bell rings, one of you told that also. Oh. It reminds of which sound? Yes. Oh, my oh, You can just hear the bell once again. Just concentrate on that how Om sound comes. Ma'am, the O is very short. The M is pretty short. Oh. Oh, don't you do you hear the same Om sound comes? See, the Om is a very powerful mantra. It is song of God. Actually, it represents God only. So some other day, we will take up meaning of Om. Today, we don't have that much time. So the, the ring of the bell resembles the sound of Om. So it calms down our mind. 
and connects us. We, it makes us ready for the prayer. And some of, some people say there is some scientific reason also. Mm -hmm. The left side of the brain and the right side of the right side of the brain they connect with each other. Some harmony is created. So because of which, at the same time, we become logical and alert. All these things, scientific reasons are also there. Another reason is the bell is normally at a height. After ringing the bell, immediately you should not go away from that. You should stand under the bell for some time to absorb that vibration that should go into your mind. So after ringing the bell, stand there till the sound stops. Then only you will get completely energized. That is also another reason. And to create such great vibrations, you cannot make a bell in any way you want. There are specialists. See, some special metals are only used. See, like copper, zinc, chromium, uh, nickel, cadmium, so many metals. And in a particular proportion, they have to be used. And the shape of the metal uh, bell is also important. All these factors are necessary to make that effective sound in the temple. That is about it. Then uh, you, are, you ring the bell and enter the temple. Then again in the temple, when do they ring the bell? Can you say? While you leaving, ma'am. While leaving. No, no while leaving. Like time. Time. Yes, time. In the time. Yes, in the time. time. In the time. In the time. Yes, they ring the bell, no, in the temple. And along with the bell, sometimes they blow the conch also. Just to see how effective the sound of the conch and the bell. Is it coming? So this combined effect really vibrates us and it gives us some sort of calmness and connects us with Bhagavan and we experience so much of peace. That is why after coming from the temple, we all feel peaceful. That's Arti sound. In villages, what happens is small villages, only few streets will be there. In the evening, they can hear the temple bell. It is uh, so powerful. Immediately, they will stop all other work because when they hear the temple bell, they know Arti is going on in the temple. They will go down to Bhagavan, whether they are in the shop or at home. They used to do like that. That was the custom in the villages. Then, uh, Miss huh? Vedan, tell yes, Vedan, what do you want to say? The bell also activates the stimuli in the brain. Ah, yes, that's what I told you. Scientifically, it stimulates the brain very good. So, actually, not only in our Hinduism, the bells play a major role in other religions also. Church bell also is there. Buddhists give great importance to bell. In all, have you been to a Buddhist monastery? <laughs> Buddhist monastery, have you been? There you see, you can see a series of cylindrical bell. So people just rotate all the cylinders, some sound is created, and Buddhists use the bell at the beginning, at the end of meditation also. So bell and um, now... Uh, um, uh, one second. Ma'am, when we went to Bhutan, we saw these uh, cylindrical bells, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's about temple bell. Then at home also we have a small bell, no? Ganti, money. So when do we use that? That bell? Ma'am, can I show ma ma when we ma do puja at the evening? Ma ma we ring the bell when we keep her. Yes, when we do puja, we use the bell. That is announcing. We are starting the puja. Whoever is doing the puja, first they will ring the bell. The puja is about to start. Ma'am, also we use ma'am. Huh? Yes? While ending also. Ma'am, ma'am, yes. ending also we use this bell, no, ma'am. Bending? Bending. Ending. 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 That is doing arati also at home. Ma'am, yes. And the children are only asked to ring the bell. Do you all do that? When your father yes, or mother is doing puja, I only yes, do that. Your participation in the puja, you all should do that. Ma'am, may I show the some bell? bell? Yeah. Yeah. Amma, I, I, I have this. One, one at a time. Any one, any one, please. One Ma'am, may I Yes, yes. Who? Nitika is showing the puja bell. That's, uh, ah, yeah. yes. Puja bell, yes. Ring I it, ring my puja room, ma'am. Ring it, ring, it, ring the puja bell. It's here. Ring. You are not able to hear. Okay. Okay. See, and you know, we do puja to the bell also. After Vigneshwara puja, 
ஒரு <laughs> the virtuous and noble forces we want them to enter our house and demonic and evil forces should go out of the house for that only we ring the bell that is the significance of ringing bell at home okay now we we'll, you will be listening to some interesting stories about bell so when you ring this bell so it does not only go out of your home it leaves you from your from within you also okay so we saw this like how there are other in other temples also different types of bells are there now we will talk about some interesting and famous bells of you know indian temples this one that i'm showing you from ratangad mata temple in madhya pradesh so this is as on date the heaviest uh, bell Uh, that has been installed in an indian temple okay uh, before this there are uh, there, there there is another bell in cochin uh, i think kerala there is in uh, there is one temple uh, that that was weighing like around some 1500 or so so after that this has become the uh, heaviest bell okay so this is there in the madhya pradesh and this so another mom, interest yeah yes mom, uh, when you showed that uh, uh, that puji gan puja gan ka picture in that why was uh, nandi on top of the bell nandi on top of the bell. yeah okay uh, we'll have to look up that that is some some nice question that you came up with vishruta why yes, only nandi but there are different types of bell there is also a garuda bell uh, in some traditions they instead of nandi they use garuda there is Mom, also... but mostly why is there nandi? Ah, hanuman is why there also... hanuman and uh, nandi ah. they keep on the bells now no why hmm. mostly nandi Mom, when you go to most homes you see the be- bottom most of the bell as nandi Yes, that's interesting to note, right? Why mostly Nandi? That we need to check. Even I have to check myself. That's a quite nice question. But yeah, but there are other things also like Garuda, Vajra. There are other forms of bells also are available. But so in South India, it is very common to see that Nandi in the you know home bell that we use. Okay, so that was uh, so that was the biggest bell I showed you, right? The heaviest one. The other one. So this is a very uh, there's another one interesting uh, temple. Uh, this is the temple of ma ganteshwari the name comes after uh, you know the, the takes after uh, ganta right which is uh, the name hindi and sanskrit name for bell so uh, this is located in uh, sambalpur odisha so this uh, particular temple is located near the great uh, the river mahanidhi where three streams of river come and join in a single place causing a whirlpool okay so that so when it causes a whirlpool there it is basically very dangerous that particular location when the boats uh, go that way the fishermen when they go out and go on their boat the boats might get pulled and they may lose their way and especially during storm and windy days it is very dangerous right but the big bells in ma ganteshwari temple during the heavy wind the, the you know the bells uh, used to a uh, swing and ring okay so this sound of the bell actually alerted the fishermen and the people coming on board to stay away from that region and they used to navigate the other way and go so this acted as you know the position and navigation system then now but now also the, there are thousands of bells in that particular temple so that's why it's famous for bells uh, previously there used to be heavy and big bells now it is not there and now they have also constructed this hira kund dam which is now uh, sorted out that problem of you know whirlpool and uh, people getting stuck but uh, in the earlier days uh, this particular temple the bell when it rang it was actually protecting and uh, acting as an alerting mechanism uh, for the uh, boatmen and the fishermen who used to come that way so that is Ma- interesting yeah i just looked up why nandi is always on top of the bell and it looks like nandi uh, shiva always used to take the form of a bull when he traveled so to worship shiva they have put that on top of the bell 
that's night nitika so maybe we can take it up as a homework but i would request uh, don't look up things during the class you will miss on what we are currently yes, okay sir. discussing okay I'll, here okay. i clicked the screen here yeah 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 okay so the next one here i will uh, tell you interesting story okay story behind the great bell which was installed in the brihadeshwara temple Brihadeshwara Temple, you all know, it's a great architectural marvel. We spoke about it earlier, also. You know, uh, the last step was they they built the temple and the bell was mounted. And to start off with the prayers or the arti, then the you know, the temple puja in the temple. So the tradition was that it could be started only after the bell was rung. Okay. Now the chief priest came and tried ringing the bell. They, he couldn't ring the bell. and you know he was like you know they didn't understand why the bell wouldn't ring so they asked other chief priests and rest of them to bell after doing then they thought there's something wrong they did all the pujas and all and there was the head priest got a divine you know could hear a divine voice saying only the person who truly contributed sincerely to the construction of this particular temple will be able to ring the bell is what he heard the divine voice he heard and everybody was dumbstruck okay they thought okay raja raja shoda who actually uh, came up with the idea and built the bell it took 15 years for the temple to be built so they thought maybe he should come and ring the bell only then it will all happen so they called raja raja shoda he also rang the bell but nothing no sound he couldn't ring the bell so he was also taken by surprise so they tried everyone okay maybe the workers and laborers who contributed to constructing the temple they all tried everybody anybody who contributed in a very small way also everybody tried ringing nothing could happen they were not able to start the puja they were not able to offer to the god nothing was you know nothing was happening they were all really you know uh, you know they were all very uh, upset about this they were thinking out you know what do we do what is the way that time that moment that the, an old lady a very fragile lady with a worn out cloth she just she was a very normal ordinary looking woman she entered the temple and when she entered the temple she just reached out to the bell and she hit it what happened to everybody's surprise the bell rang with a very loud sound that everybody was waiting for to hear everybody was taken by surprise but what has what could have this old woman such fragile and old woman have done which none of us did right in the construction how did she contribute then they came to know for the past 15 years you know while the temple was being constructed every day without fail the lady used to come to a place and she used to make sure that the laborers the ox and oxen which were contributing you know all the uh, she was offering buttermilk and water to quench the thirst, thirst okay and she was doing that service without fail every day all those 15 years okay so this shows that it is a, a you know her selfless service and devotion without expecting anything in return right uh, without expecting anything in return with such sincerity and devotion she has been doing and even such small acts of service when done sincerely with much which you know without any with as being selfless is recognized and given importance to by god okay paropakaram idam shariram so this is something that we learn from this interesting story of bell from uh, brihadeshwara temple okay there is another interesting story of uh, you know raja krishna devaraya and who was a famous courtesan or concierge from his uh, a court tenali rama tenali rama you all have would have heard of tenali right so raja krishna dev raya so he he for had this practice or habit of having his morning and breakfast lunch and dinner you know having his meal only after hearing to the only only after the prasadam is offered the that offered to god at tirupati tirupati tirumala once the you know prasadam is offered to the god after that only he used to have his meals and all so you know but what happened uh, he his uh, his fort right known as chandragiri fort was little far away from the temple people had to get down seven hills to and reach him to tell that the prasadam has been offered which was very difficult right so what they have what he had done from the sanctum sanctorum of the you know the temple till the till his fort he had constructed many bell towers in between and connected the bells you know uh, like that so that when the bell was rung 
at the temple the bell in his uh, dining room would also he, uh, you know uh, you know be rung and then after that he will know that okay the prasadam is has been offered and then he would have his pawn so this you know this not only shows the you know the the you know practice of how he was you know giving importance to having food only after it is our prasadam is offered to god but also the scientific and mathematic minds of uh, uh, people then who came up with this idea of constructing the bell towers and all that so these are some you know interesting uh, uh, you know events or moments connected to temple bells uh, that we wanted to share with you so do we have time for bhajan hema or shall we do next week three students shall we do yes uh, let us have bhajan or uh, just 5 minutes yes yes okay. yes okay vedant uh, just i will say you rip only once so you repeat just for practice hmm? vedant are you ready and mute vedant vedant and mute oh vedant is not on mute Vedant, can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Guru Deva, Jaya Deva. So your voice is breaking, no? Vedant, we can't hear you. Come forward. Keep the thing. Ha. Huh? Okay. Guru Deva, Jaya Deva. Even now we are not able. Can okay, we do? next time we will do with Veda. Mahasini, are you ready? Mahasini. Yes, Tamma. Guru Deva, Jaya Deva. Guru Deva, Jaya Deva. Charanam Charanam Guru Deva Deva. Charanam Charanam Guru Deva Deva. Others also can follow in mute. You will get practice, no? Okay. Pranava Swarupa Deva Ti Deva. Pranava Swarupa Deva Ti Deva. Yana Pradayaka Sad Guru Deva. Yana Pradayaka Sad Guru Deva. Charanam Sharanam Guru Deva 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 Deva. Charanam Charanam Guru Deva. Charanam Charanam Guru Deva. Very good, Dhyasini. Next, Vaishnavi sisters. So many hands I find raising. Next week, <laughs> next time I will give you all chance. I will want everyone to sing. Now, Vaishnavi sisters will sing. Then we'll go to story time. Have they been able to unmute, Vaishnavi? Okay. Guru Deva, Jaya Deva. Guru Deva, Jaya Deva. Charanam Charanam Guru Deva Deva. Charanam Charanam Guru Deva Deva. Charanam Charanam Guru Deva. Charanam Charanam Guru Deva. Pranava Swarupa Deva Di Deva. Pranava Swarupa Deva Di Deva. Yana Pradayaka Sad Guru Deva. Yana Pradayaka Sad Guru Deva. Charanam Charanam Guru Deva 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 Deva. Charanam Charanam Guru Deva. Charanam Charanam Guru Deva. Very good. Both Hasini and Vaishnavi sisters, you all sang very well. We'll give chance to everyone three at a time every week. Vedans, we will hear you next week. Okay? We couldn't hear you properly. Okay? So next time when we meet another three students like that, we'll practice this bhajan, making all of you sing one by one. Very good. 
Okay, now okay, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sudarji and Soumya. Yeah, next time we go to the temple, I'm sure all of us are going to ring the bell with uh, a lot of, you know, um, uh, meaning. We know the meaning of why we are doing it. We're not just doing it mechanically. And of course, uh, I don't stand on the bell ringing. I walk off. Next time I will stand there for some time. So it's every we all learn beautiful. The sound of the conch, the sound of the bell, so divine. Don't you think, children? Such a divine sound, it's a divine space. So definitely at home or in temple, we will follow that. And going on the same theme of temples, so storytelling also is based on temples. Okay, some important temples and some interesting facts about them. I think we should all know about it. It's a part, proud part of our Indian heritage. Remember children, last year I told you about Arupadai Vida, the six abodes of Lord Murga or Kartikeya. Yes, yes, yes. So I think last October 2022, we had gone through a series of this Arupadai Vida, Tirichandur, Parani, Swami Malai, Tirupura Kundram, Tirutani and Paramadar Chole, isn't it? So today we are going to see one story, interesting story on Tirichandur. We had already seen a story last year like how uh, the Sura Padman was killed and all that. This is a slightly different story on the mystery and the magic of this powerful temple. So let us go to the story. One second. One second. I'll just share it. Yes. Okay. Now I got the correct link. Yeah. So today we are going to see the story of Tirchandur located on just on the banks of an ocean. And here we saw that when tsunami struck this area, the water did not touch or not destroy the temple at all, you know, which had done so much devastation, just two, three kilometers on either side, there was devastation, but this temple remained untouched. Let us see what is the interesting story behind this. In South India, when we had, you see the waves, they went up to the temple and they receded back. This is the temple Tirichandur. Okay, it's a very special temple. There is an idol of Lord Murga or Kartikeya and it is made of five elements. You know, five different elements have been combined to make this beautiful temple. Just like we saw the bells also are made with different elements. Even the temple, no, idols also are made with different elements. And this is so valuable. Actually, the, the beautiful, uh, the carving or the molding of the statue as well as the uh, metals put in, the weight, everything, it would be very precious. Also, you know, Britishers, when they came in through the East India Company, they would take away such beautiful idols to the museums because it's such a beautiful artwork. Maybe not for the sanctity of God, but they, they found it so beautiful, these bronze statues, the way they were uh, structured. So same way Britishers went to this temple when they were ruling India that time. And they picked up the statue from the temple, along with all other, you know, the, every temple has got a lot of treasures attached to it, a lot of gold, a lot of silver, a lot of money. Every temple those days, the kings used to give, uh, make a treasury for the maintenance of the temple. That also they took away and they went by sea to take it back to Britain. So as they were going in the ocean with this huge idol in their uh, boat, a cyclone hit them, you know, suddenly without any warning, a cyclone came and hit. So the Indians who were there on the boat, the Indian employees, they told them that, see, we cannot go ahead. We have not seen such a, you know, drastic cyclone has not been seen. If we go ahead anymore with the idol in our boat, definitely we will sink and lose all our lives. So the British officers also get scared. They got scared. So very respectfully, they they said, okay, there is something and some power in this idol. Let us not take this uh, idol ahead. Otherwise, we will be all killed in this uh, cyclone. So they very gently lowered down the idol, 
somewhere in the middle of the ocean, so many kilometers away, 10 to 15 kilometers away from the shore. They lowered it, they left it there. And the moment they lowered it, it is said that the sea became peaceful. And they went, went back with other things, other treasures which they had. Now, for many years, nobody knew where this idol was. The temple was not having the idol, the original idol. Then one of the pujaris or pandit who was uh, offering prayers in the temple, he had a dream that a voice said that, you know, it came and told him, the idol, and that I am there in the ocean. Why are you not picking me and putting me back into the ocean? So this pujari, this pandit, he said, such a vast ocean, my lord. In the dream, he tells him, such a vast ocean, my lord. How am I going to identify it? In the depth of the ocean, where you are, I cannot, I, I just have a small boat with me. I don't have any navigating systems to find out. And those days, no sonar and all that. Remember, they can't see the depth uh, ocean uh, bed. So the Lord says, don't worry. I will tell you how you will identify. You will see a lemon floating on the ocean, signifying the spot where I am. So this Pujari took a few people with him on, his, on a boat, small boat, and they saw a lemon floating right somewhere 10 kilometers from shore, floating on the shore. They dived down and they found the idol and they carefully brought the idol back to the ocean. Yes, they say that there are some erosions due to the idol staying in the water for so long. The fishes would have, you know, uh, tried to scrape out, seeing something glittering in the water. So the there is some distortion, but that original idol is still there in the temple now. Okay, even today the same idol is there in the temple where you can see the distortion. Okay, and there's a stone uh, saying that the sea will not bring any harm to this temple. And this this was this stone was inscribed many many years ago. Okay, that the sea now will not sea was uh, the idol was in the sea. Sea will not destroy. Just when the tsunami came, remember the huge waves, you all uh, must have read about tsunami in your geography classes, where the tectonic plates, when they move and they crash against each other, the water is thrown out with such high force, it goes hundreds of kilometers above the land and it just submerges everything. And this temple is slightly below, you know, it, it, but the sea level, still we saw that the waves did not enter the temple and did not destroy. It receded back by two kilometers, in fact. The waves did come up, but they, nothing happened to that particular city around the temple. And that temple was saved. Such an old temple, it's, a, it's thousands of years old. It's still there now. And it's still there intact right on the shore of the sea. Okay. This is this ocean, they say, uh, the ocean, this temple, the ocean loves it. You know, the waves go gently and just wash the uh, front steps of the temple and goes back. Even though the waves can go into the temple, but they do not destroy, they don't go inside. They just touch and go back. So this is the speciality of this temple, the location, uh, the, way, the way it is located. And also, it has got a lot of power. Now, how do the temples get power? Because so many people have meditated and you know, uh, a lot of positive energy has any temple for that matter. When we do a lot of prayers, a lot of uh, chanting and a lot of rituals. So that entire area becomes sanctified. It becomes pure. So that has raised the glory. Thousands of years of chanting by uh, sages and people, learned people. And uh, thus, this temple is very, very sacred. And people still are amazed by the fact as how uh, it is still intact today. It is not at all uh, attacked by the water and it is not eroded by the ocean. So this was the story of uh, Tirchandur uh, Morgan Temple. And now we go to quiz time. Okay. Okay. So quiz time. Who can tell me, raise your hands like that physically or, but the, or the, whatever way you do it. What can you remember and tell me the six abodes of Lord Murga? What are the Aru Padai Veda? I told you in the starting of this uh, video uh, session also. Whatever you can remember, okay. No hands raised, I see. How many of you remember? Anybody? Anyone? Okay, one, 
Uma ma'am is raising her hand. Shall we give Uma ma'am a chance now? Okay. Yes, please tell us. Tirthani. Uh. Tirichandu. Yes. Parani. Parani. Tirupangundram. Hmm. Paramudhi Cholai. Yes. Uh, next, uh, Tirichandur, I think. Swami Malai. Swami Malai. Swami Malai. Swami Malai. Ah, very nice. Very Swami. good. So, see now. Now, can anybody repeat? Very nice. Thank you, Uma, ma'am. Thank you. Thank anybody you. repeat? Few of the Arupadai. Oh, yes. Ma'am, may I? Yes, please. Tiru Parak Parak Kundam. Okay. Tiru Kundrur. Mm -hmm. Swa Swami Malai. Very good. Tiru Tani and Pazandur. And? Paramudur Cholai. Paramudur Cholai. Ma, I know only three shall I. Yes, please tell me. Tiruttani. Hmm. Palani. Yes. Tiruchandur. Ah, very good. So Swami Malai. Swami Malai. Very good. So there, these are the, and uh, like those students who were there last year also, we have learned stories about uh, Tiruchandur, Swami Malai, Parani, we have uh, read that. Maybe someday we can go back and revise. Okay, second question. The ship could not go any further. Why? Ma may I ask a question? Yes, Nikita. I forgot which temple this was again. This was Tiruchandur. Tiruchandur. Okay. Hmm. Okay. The ship could not go any further. Why? Sai Nishant. The ship could not go, in, uh, go further as the, uh, the uh, weather was not good and the storm uh, was raising. Hmm. And then uh, the uh, Indian employee said that if we go more further, we might be, we will be destroyed and sink. Hmm. Uh, so let's uh, drop the uh, uh, idol down in the water hmm. and go away. Okay, okay, good. Hasini, anything different you want to say? No, can I? Amma, the, the uh, power of the idol, uh, the, uh, the idol had uh, three elements hmm. and a full element he had. So that is why while they were going, Britishers were taking and going this idol. Uh, suddenly with that uh, water element, the water uh, waves raised and it was a big um, Very good. That's, tells the Sami like that. Yes, very good. That's also a good perspective. It could be the power of, it is the power of God. It is not only the weight of the idol, it is also the power of the God which could have caused the uh, cyclone. Very good. Who else wanted to answer anything different? Yes, uh, Chinmay? Ma'am, may I? Amma, Chinmay, the, Chinmay is answering. When the idol was dropped, the hmm. uh, rain was stopped because of the power of the idol. Very good. So we see that the moment they put down the idol respectfully, the entire sea became peaceful. Um. Very good. Now, how was the idol found again? Ma'am, may I answer? <laughs> V Vaishnavi, how was the idol found again? The idol was found again as one of, of the Tiruchandu temple. One pandit was have was has got a dream that the idol was buried like it was in a underwater. Under the water. Mm. Then they had traveled by a small boat and mm. they discovered the idol. Uh, under the water and they bring that uh, and they brought that to the temple. Now, we had a dream. Okay, very good. What marked the presence of the idol below the sea? Okay. Yes. Ma'am, a lemon, ma'am. A lemon, a lemon floating on the sea marked the dream. Lord said that I am there below the lemon. Very good. Thank you, children. And that finishes the story time for today. And I hand over to Lakshmi ma'am for the closing prayers. Okay, children, all of you must have enjoyed, no, about the temple bell and temple stories, the magic of Tiruchandur and all that, no? So whenever you get a chance, try to visit that temple. It will be very nice. Okay? Hmm? Now let us close. Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasorma Jyotirgamaya 
मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओ शांति 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 ही